Do you believe the idea that there is a, a lot of protest music going on? It still has a part to play in our life and in politics itself? Well, in, uh, I guess in the, it depends on what your, what your fight is, I guess. Um, yeah. In sort of England, uh, you know, and like sort of say, sorry, so like past sort of protest music was about civil liberties and stuff. Yeah. Bob Dylan, you know, it's like standing up for civil rights and stuff like that. And now those rights are kind of like in place. Um, well, you're you're almost suggesting, Doug, there's nothing to protest well, about. Well, no, anymore. I don't. No, I don't agree with that. But I, I, there's lots of issues, but it's got to be like quite emotive for people to be engaged with it. Yeah. Um, it's now like in the social conscience, like that people need to like in their day to day, like encourage equality. I don't, like I don't know if someone needs to sing about it in in England as much um but in other countries like it totally works like you look at pussy riot and um and like other stuff like that and it's like yeah. where like real uh sort of there's real social inequalities yeah. it needs to be brought to like the sort of forefront um yeah Lu I think we I think we can get Louise in on the discussion on the line from uh, from Canada hi Louise can you hear us now Hi, John. Yes, I can hear you no, now. You're, you're so sorry you're about that. No, it's not your fault. I guess it's the <laughs> technicals. We're used to that. You're, you're very loud and clear. I don't know if you heard Doug there saying that maybe no. one reason that, that protest music wasn't as strong or as, as, uh, as, as, as present in the musical environment as it used to be is that there were fewer things to protest about. What do you think? Um, I don't think it's necessarily a case that there are fewer things to protest about. I mean... You know, there's protests all over the world at the moment. It's like the whole world's on fire. I mean, what what I think it's the case of is that, um, you know, the new generation is indoctrinated into a system that mm. tells us to seek a, how, uh, seek a higher power instead of, you know, thinking for ourselves. And we're told that, you know, we're geeks or that we're weird if we express an opinion that transcends out of, outside of the mob mentality yeah. or the status quo. And Louise, that creates yeah. um, a fear of ostracisation and exclusion. Do you think it makes a difference? Do you think that protest music, I mean, you, you are, if you like, a protest musician a lot of the time. Do you think it makes any difference to anything very much? Well, I mean, for me personally, um, I, I don't view myself as, as a protest singer. I sure. view myself as a young working class woman from Wakefield passing on the message of the disenfranchised new generation, you know, who, like many other people, grew up surrounded by the anger, the poverty and the violence and the apathy in, you know, in post Thatcher Britain. Um, you know, but one thing I can say is that, you know, I, I believe that um, music already has changed the world and it's, it's certainly changed my world and like Ricky said you know music is a very very powerful tool that can yeah. give us hope you know it can give us belief and it can empower us you know to change our world and the world around us for yeah. the better. Doug, I mean, Doug from, from Peace, I mean, you, you heard Louise there she thinks music changes the world. Yeah yeah I, I totally agree and I think I think what's kind of more important and what has sort of changed uh, music and society is like more about like bringing people together like um, like you look at artists like Otis Redding and like Slime Family Stone like bringing like crowds together from like whatever background like all together as like one unity and like spreading like a positive message about love is is more important than like a message of hate like that changes things more than um, than maybe protest music, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, no, there's something comforting. I don't know why there's something comforting for someone like me who's very, very old to hear that protest music still has a part to play and it is playing it. Ricky, last word for me. Yeah, I just think um, that protest music, you know, there's so much to talk about. Um, but I, um, it started off, like, say, like, hip-hop, started off as kind of like a newsreel for the people, you know, the people that didn't used to watch news and the people that wasn't interested in, in politics. Hip-hop became like that, and that's how you found about certain issues in the street. And I think that in England, we had, like, punk rock and we had ska music when you brought reggae and, and, and punk together, and they yeah. came together on issues to create music. And I think there is so much going on, especially in, in, in England and the UK today, especially with our music. I think it's been kind of so marginalised, and, you know, you're not allowed to express yourself no more and if you do then you're then you're put to the back pages or you're put on a on a little radio station or a private radio station you know i feel that, that even like the bbc they should back it they should have like a protest hour you know music slot you know i mean I'd, i would even host it just to just to <laughs> give people the platform i don't think they have enough of a platform
platform. You're taken, you're taken, mate. You've got a, I just think you've got a full-time a job as fat boy. No, no, no. Uh, but, I mean, even like with Glastonbury, they have the left field where they have like a mm. certain stage where people have a stage of protest. They can get up there and sing and say what they need to say. And I think that there needs to be more platforms. Okay, David Ruffley, you're nodding enthusiastically. David Ruffley, Conservative MP. And you also, you look very, very engaged when we had that bit of Bob Dylan earlier on as well. Well, I, I agree with Ricky that uh, a, a lot of... Uh, popular music is throwaway stuff. It's not an accident that the 1964, the times they're changing, is something universal. I mean, I know younger people, I mean, I'm 50. Uh, and uh, interesting story, true story. Uh, I was giving George Osborne a lisp, uh, lift before the last uh, general election and I had Bob Dylan's greatest hits on and the first note of the times are changing came on and Osborne went straight into uh, come senators, come congressmen, please hear the call, don't block up the doorway, don't stand in the hall. And uh, he knew he's Dylan. Mm. And the thing is, it's universal and it endures, unlike some popular music. Yes. And I'd like to see, uh, you know, more... Uh, protest music that, that can last 40 years. Yeah, Doug, we can hear you choking down the line. Sorry, it's aren't, sorry. aren't you impressed by George Osborne naming True and story. singing <laughs> the times are changing from the first note? Um... I'm sure that's a true story, yeah. <laughs> it is. I, it is. Oh, it's just been ruined on so many levels. Uh, <laughs> Don't you like Dylan? I love Bob Dylan. That's Fine. Sort of the... okay. Well, we can all agree on that. <laughs>